Mumbai and Pune have always taken an average of uh, you know 50 to 55% of the national uh, appetite in terms of primary sales. Pause in the hike definitely gives a strong indication to the uh, to the wider audience that RBI is getting comfortable with the inflation in the ma- in the in the macro situation. So all of this has opened up a lot of options for the home buyers that are trying to find the right product and also within their budget. So they are looking at these peripheral areas and that is absolutely pushing uh, the sales trend in Mumbai. As the population grows, it is essential to strengthen our infrastructure to meet the needs of the people. The master plan also focuses on the transport system, healthcare facilities and digital connectivity. Hello everyone. Namaskar, salam, sat sri akal, vanakkam. We are back with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by housing.com. This is India's first real estate focused podcast. It brings to you updates, views and insights about the reality sector, an explainer on a chosen subject and a deep dive into an industry trend or topic. Inclusivity at heart of Delhi master plan says Luton governor VK Saxena. Sales of residential units and new supply witnessed an 8% and 11% year on year growth in the April June quarter of 2023 across eight major cities in the country respectively says a latest proptiger.com report. Vikas Wadawan, Group CFO, REA Indian Business at proptiger.com and Ankita Sood, Head of Research, proptiger.com, housing.com and makan.com share their insights on housing sales trends and why and how to plan for inheritance if you are single. Details of all these and much more in this episode. Stay tuned. Inclusivity, ensuring equitable access to all segments of society, to resources, services and economic opportunities, lies at the heart of the Delhi Master Plan 2041 and developing better infrastructure in the national capital is its key focus, Lieutenant Governor V.K. Saxena has said. Quote, as the population grows, it is essential to strengthen our infrastructure to meet the needs of the people. The Master Plan also focuses on the transport system healthcare facilities, and digital connectivity. These advancements will enhance the quality of life and ensure that the residents have opportunities for growth, Saxena said at a session on Delhi 2041 New Master Plan at the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry on June 28. The lieutenant governor highlighted the importance of public participation in achieving better results and stressed that coordination among departments can help achieve objectives. The Delhi Development Authority DDA accorded preliminary approval to the draft master plan for Delhi 2041 in June 2021 and approved the draft in March 2023. The master plan is yet to be notified and implemented. The objective of the master plan, a vision document prepared by the city's planners and land owning agency, sets out the course of development in the national capital. It aims to foster inclusive growth and prosperity, innovation, entrepreneurship and job creation and contribute to economic development of the city. Saxena listed out initiatives such as cleanliness and development of the Yamuna floodplains and the refurbishing of roads during his tenure in the past one year. He said heritage is also a major subject in the city and the DDA is making efforts to restore sites such as the Mehroli Archaeological Park. Quote, the Delhi Development Authority has been at the forefront trying to help and bring about a synergy between all the thought processes of the citizens and their aspirations and bringing them together as a master plan, unquote, said Subhashish Panda, Vice Chairman of the DDA. Sales of residential units and new supply witnessed an 8% and 11% year-on-year growth in the April-June quarter of 2023 across eight major cities in the country respectively, underscoring the resilience of the housing market, reported PropTiger.com. A total of 80,250 units were sold in the eight cities in quarter 2, 2023, compared to 74,320 in the year-ago quarter, showing a growth of 8% said the Real Insight Residential April to June 2023 report, a quarterly analysis of India's top eight residential markets by REA-backed PropTiger.com. 
The markets covered in the report include Ahmedabad, Bengaluru, Chennai, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Mumbai Metropolitan Region, Delhi National Capital Region, and Pune. Mumbai and Pune continue to record the maximum traction, taking a combined share of 61% in overall sales during April-June 2023. On the residential new supply front, Realtors launched 1,13,770 units, an increase of 11% compared to 1,2140 in the April-June quarter of 2022. Mumbai has been the front runner in terms of new supply, followed by Pune and Ahmedabad. During the second quarter, April to June 2023, 15% of the residential units sold were classified as ready to move in, while the remaining 85% were still under construction. The majority of sales, comprising 27%, were concentrated in the price range of Rs 45 to 75 lakh, closely followed by the price range of over Rs 1 crore, which accounted for 25% of the overall sales. In a semi-annual comparison, sales witnessed notable growth of 15%, while new supply experienced a substantial increase of 43%. The largest portion of new residential units introduced during the quarter was focused on the rupees 45 to 75 lakh price range, accounting for the highest share of 33% among all launches. Notably, units priced at over rupees 1 crore constituted a significant portion, representing nearly 29% of the total. We spoke to Vikas Wadhwan, Group CFO, REA India, and business head PropTiger.com, and Ankita Sood, Head of Research, PropTiger.com, Housing.com, and Makan.com to help us with your insights and understand the trends. Listen in. A very warm welcome, Vikas and Ankita. Delighted to have you on the show. Thank you for having us, Goro. Thank you. Thanks, Goro. Ankita, first to you. The Western markets have sustained their property rally. Mumbai and Pune, on a combined basis, accounted for 61% of the national sales during the quarter. Can you help us understand this? What factors are driving this rally? Sure, sure. So, uh, Gaurav, as we know, uh, Mumbai and Pune are the two largest residential markets in the country. And as you rightly mentioned, these two cities uh, normally account for the largest share in the property uh, sales in terms of, uh, you know, the fresh primary sales that we uh, register. Historically, also, if we see, Mumbai and Pune have always taken an average of, uh, you know, 50 to 55% of the national uh, appetite in terms of primary sales. Now, you know, coming to Mumbai, it witnessed a tremendous residential development in the past decade. We know that fueled by demand that's coming in from the peripheral areas, the peripheral micro markets such as Thane, Kalyan, Dombivali, Vasai, Viravar and Navi Mumbai. Now, these localities, we know, have a relatively lower price point as compared to the conventional, uh, you know, heart of the city markets. And uh, these peripheral areas are growing because of the focus on connectivity, especially via the metro, you know, that's being proposed. So all of this has opened up a lot of options for the home buyers that are trying to find the right product and also within their budget. So they are looking at these peripheral areas and that is absolutely pushing uh, the sales trend in Mumbai. Now coming on to Pune, uh, absolutely, you know, the largest, uh, one of the largest IT hubs in the country and is home to several global companies as well. Now that has attracted a lot of people to move to Pune, uh, you know, to set their base from Pune inside and also from the outside uh, cities as well. Now, I would like to add here that property sales in Pune has grown at the fastest, that's close to 37% across the top eight cities in the June quarter. Areas such as Hinjavadi, uh, Tatwade, Ravet, Vagoli have been seen as the most preferred localities uh, by the home buyers. So connectivity across Mumbai and Pune these are one of the major factors that has been driving uh, sales in these two uh, Western key markets in the country. 
विकास इन द स्टॉप एट रेजिडेंशियल मार्केट्स कंटिन्यू ऑन अ ग्रोथ पाथ विथ सेल्स राइजिंग बाय एट परसेंट इन द जून क्वार्टर टू वॉर एक्सटेंड अकॉर्डिंग टू यू द आर बी आईज डिसीजन टू पॉज द हाइक इन द की लैंडिंग रेट हैज हेल्प इन सस्टेनिंग स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉजिटिव सेंटिमेंट्स फॉर बाइंग रेजिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टीज वेरी वेरी पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन गौरव एंड आई थिंक आर बी आई डिसीजन टू पॉज द हाइक uh definitely has impact on uh, the real estate demand sentiment as well as uh, the sales growth which we are seeing in the last quarter uh because i i strongly feel that even if uh the uh, rates will go slightly more up it will not impact the demand but it will definitely impact the sentiment so that pause in the hike definitely gives a strong indication to the uh, to the wider audience that rbi is getting comfortable with the inflation in the ma- in the in the macro situation so that's one positive signal but there are some other factors which are which are igniting the overall growth in the market which we've discussed in the past as well one definitely is the pent up demand during the covid period and also during uh, a very very long haul of downturn in real estate market so for the last quite a few years the real estate demand was somber uh, it has come back so that pent up demand is igniting the in, igniting the growth in the market uh, growing appetite for home ownership i think uh, anyways in india people love uh, uh, owning uh, real estate uh, that has further grown on account of covid because people want to own a home now and they definitely either buying a home in the bigger cities or buying home in in their hometowns in tier 2 cities wherever they can afford uh revival in uh, economy post pandemic era uh, that is that is another factor which is uh, igniting the growth in the market uh, and another factor which is which is also a big factor of a uh, lot of buying in new homes is people are looking at more spacious homes and people are looking at homes which are in good societies which has the facilities uh, which you need in your day to day life within the premises so these are the few few things which which is uh, contributing to the growth and my strong hunch is that we can anticipate a similar upward trend not only in calendar year 23 but also a large part of 24 because typically real estate cycles are long whether it is an up cycle or a down cycle we just come out of a long down cycle my sense is that up cycle will also going to be equally long ankita the property prices across top cities have been rising with cities such as gurugram recording a double digit growth what factors do you believe are driving the prices in major cities of india sure so gorov like uh, you know vikas very rightly put in all the factors into perspective home ownership uh, pent up demand uh, you know the the need for larger homes now all of that is absolutely pushing demand and if i specifically talk about uh, gurgaon you know i'll come to that across the top eight cities there people are wanting to own a piece of their own property and you know we conduct various surveys as well and real estate has been cited as the most uh, preferred investment asset class uh, you know across be it fds or stocks so yes there is an inclination to buy a home and that has actually pushed up prices across the top eight cities where they were growing in the range of 2 to 6% weighted average now they are going up to uh, you know 7 to 10% as well and certain key micro markets uh, let's say bangalore you have whitefield the ones closer to the uh, office or commercial areas in gurgaon golf course road golf course extension uh, you know be the spr all of these roads have clocked in uh, double digit uh, growths now specifically coming to the reasons why let's say gurgaon has done uh, pretty well we know gurgaon is home to uh, a lot of fortune 500 companies proximity to airport and of course you know the infrastructure uh, push that has been happening so ripple effect of commercial is always there on residential 
also one of the key factors uh, that we are witnessing is the, uh, certain peripheral areas or regions on the outside are also looking at Gurgaon as a preferred oh, home area. Also because, uh, you know, apartment culture is there, there is gated communities. And through our various surveys, we have seen that there is an inclination of people to move towards a gated society, which Gurgaon does offer in abundance. So, of course, the right product is there in Gurgaon. And, uh, you know, coupled with the other things such as proximity, Gurgaon definitely has seen uh, and, of course, ready to move in, specifically ready to move in. Gurgaon has seen an uh, uptick in property prices, uh, you know, to the tune of 12% weighted average. But if you look at key micro markets, they have even, uh, you know, surpassed 12%. Because Gurgaon is, is uh, uh, I think the property prices are going fast. And while Ankita made a lot of valid points, but there is one another very big contributor. Uh, see, Delhi doesn't have the kind of new age gated societies. Yes, they have. Yeah, Delhi has its fair share of gated societies in Dwarka, in Rohini, uh, and in some other pockets. But they are very very old gated societies. Now, people, as I said, are looking for. Uh, condominiums or societies where, where they have amenities and they have access to the facilities which they need in their day-to-day -day life. A lot of people from Delhi are buying in Gurgaon because all the new development which is happening in Gurgaon is offering those facilities to the buyers who are looking to buy a, a, a better home, so-called, uh, uh, in, in gated societies, are able to find it in either Gurgaon or if they have a slightly lower budget, they look at Noida. So that is another reason why Gurgaon prices are going up. Right. And, you know, uh, of course, uh, this is, uh, I would say, you know, what rightly Vikas has highlighted. I, uh, If I put it into a short, uh, this thing, then the out migration and not only in residential, uh, you know, if you see the retail segment as well, uh, the couple of uh, retail outlets, let's say from the most premium high streets of Delhi as well, you know, in search of better catchment and better infrastructure, they are moving uh, their bases to Gurgaon. So absolutely fueled by uh, the peripheral areas and out migration for Delhi for an upgrade in lifestyle. Because final question to you, with demand and prices continuing its upward trajectory, what's your outlook for coming quarters? So, uh, as I mentioned, the so outlook is is pretty positive, Gaurav. In 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 just one line, I'm I'm pretty confident that we will only going to see upward trend uh, in the next few quarters uh, because typically real estate cycles are uh, are long cycles, whether it is down cycle or up cycle. Uh, but just to link it to the specific question which you asked, when the prices are going up, uh, do we see the demand? going up in the same direction or we'll go see impact on the demand uh so my response to that is we will continue to see surge in demand while the prices will go up because in real estate market we've seen uh when the prices were not going up the demand was uh slow right and that is what we saw in last four five six years uh during covid and and pre-covid uh, but we've seen whenever the prices start going up in real estate, uh, people tend to make their real estate decision faster, which fuel the demand in the market. And they they want to catch the bus before uh, it leaves the stop and they want to fix their price and hence they make the decision faster. And also when the prices are going up, investors, uh, investors uh, focus also comes back to the market. So I'm pretty confident while the prices also will continue to grow in the coming quarters, but I'm pretty confident that the demand will also maintain the same trajectory in the coming quarters. Thank you, Ankit and Vikas, for sharing your deep insights and perspective and taking the time out and drop by for this conversation. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you, Gaurav. Why and how to plan for inheritance if you're single? Let's take you through the processes and legalities of this. Inheritance 
refers to the transfer of properties and other assets of an individual to the legal heir in case of death or any eventuality. For married individuals, the process is simple, but assets are transferred to the spouse and children. If you're single and think that estate planning is something that is not required, you may have to reconsider. Planning your inheritance is essential to prevent your assets from being transferred to unintended people. In this guide, we'll list the top reasons to plan for inheritance and share useful information on planning for it. Why is planning for inheritance important? Identifying legal heirs who will own your property is crucial when planning for the future. These individuals are the successors for property claims and insurance coverage. The Indian Succession Act 1925 applies for the transfer of property by Hindus through a will, while the Hindu Succession Act 1956 and 2005 applies for Hindus and Sikhs, Jains and Buddhists for succession without a will. There are different laws for Muslim and Christian families. Proper planning for inheritance of your assets is essential to protect your assets and prevent any property-related dispute. Who is the legal heir if a person is single? According to the Hindu Succession Act, if an unmarried person dies, their property will be distributed among their family members based on class one and class two legal heir specified under the law. According to the act, upon the death of an unmarried woman, her property will be distributed among her parents. Her father and mother can apply for a legal heir certificate. How do you plan for an inheritance? Planning helps to designate heirs for your assets. One must identify the people to whom their assets would be transferred after death and mention them in their will. Without a will, passing on the assets to people you prefer would be difficult. It is important to note that in the absence of a will, the state may take possession of an individual's assets. Another crucial step in this process is adding beneficiaries when opening bank accounts. Such beneficiaries will take precedence over a will. Being single allows you to choose the people who will inherit your assets. You can choose any of your family members, friends, or any charitable organization. Check and update the beneficiary details on insurance policies, retirement accounts, and other financial assets. After identifying the heirs who would own your assets, you must also determine the share for each of the heirs. The individual assets must also be mentioned in the will. Legal experts recommend that one must be cautious when immovable properties are bequeathed to a trust. One should ensure that the trust is competent to use the property as intended by the individual. The concept of power of attorney is mentioned under the Powers of Attorney Act 1882 and the Indian Stamp Act 1899. According to these laws, the power of attorney is an instrument that empowers a specified individual to act on behalf of the individual executing the transaction. If a person is incapacitated, there should be a power of attorney to take decisions on their behalf pertaining to finances and other matters. That's it from us for this episode. We shall be back again with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com with information and insights on the real estate industry. You can catch the episode on housing.com, on the housing.com app, on earshot.in, spotify.com, apple podcasts, google podcasts, ghana.com, and geo7. Take care and stay safe.